just drove over to Sparkbrook in Birmingham to pick this up because it was cheap and because I've always wanted to have a look at one of these. This is an engine that everybody seems to ignore, but might be really good. It's a two litre, 130 brake NA engine out of like a 05 and slightly earlier Passat. Not performance, not economy, not any, it's just nothing. But it's not a TFSI like people think it is. It's a fucking 20 valve. It's an alloy block. And bear in mind, even TFSIs were iron block. It's an alloy block, two litre, 20 valve. And I've never seen one in the flesh and there's no info about it anywhere online. All I've got is like pictures that I've, you know, researching them. And that kind of research is just literally looking at pictures of them being for sale, you know, broken for spares and thinking, hang on a minute, a lot of this is practically the same as a 180. As far as I can see in pictures, the block is a 180 block for aluminium, probably not strong enough, but I, I was didn't buy this for the block. The head looks like a 180 head to me. It's got a completely different cam cover, but it looks like a 180 head. I, I, again, I need to take it apart. It also looks like it's big port, and I'd be interested to see what the cams are. And yeah, just interesting. So this was like not even 200 pounds. So it was like, I'm having this. So uh, even the exhaust manifold looks interesting. But yeah, I've literally bought this to see if any parts are usable as performance 180 parts. I don't know. It's funny because I've bought it from Sparkbrook and Birmingham. The breakers, normal pen writing they put on everything looks a bit different to most. <laughs> I've got the inlet manifold off and it's safe to say that's large port. Here's a gasket from a normal large port. Let's see how, how much it is. It's an exact match. Is it an exact match on standard large port heads? I don't know. This is a 2005 though. Way after they stopped making large port 1.8s. So yeah, the block so far looks like a 180 one, just aluminium, which is nice. And the oil, the oil breather separator thing is different, but it looks like a bolt's on the same. But it's actually got a far better Modine oil water cooler thing. Unfortunately, like a dickhead, I was being rough and broke the bits off the breather. So I don't know if I can reuse it, but, um, We'll see. That's the other side of the Modine oil cooler. That's the housing. I don't know anything about um, TFSIs, so for all I know, this is the same as a TFSI one. I don't know. Quite, um, pretty good though. I like it. I think it gives, um, I think it might give more room when fit into an MR2 than a 180 one. I'm not sure, i have to offer it up. But on a 180 one, you've got the oil filter and then the oil cooler things between the filter and the actual housing. This is separate, which might mean you can run a fucking decent oil cooler. I might be wrong, but I think that is different, as in the whole spacing and stuff to a, uh, a normal iron block 180. I was hoping it was the same, because then we can fit that to a 180 block. But I don't think it is. Well, that's interesting. The head is double drilled for 180 pattern. And this pattern, which is different. There's four bolts there, different place. Very strange. It's, it's like a weird mishmash of 180 and something else. I wonder if the rest of the head's compatible or not. The other thing, the exhaust manifold nuts, copper. So they come off like a fucking dream. 
unlike the uh, standard ones on 180s, which are, can be a bastard to get off because obviously they're just made of steel or whatever. But yeah, copper, so they just straight off. Better look at the block. Just an alloy block. I think that's where the turbo pipe normally goes. Blanked off on these. That's a better look at the uh, intake side. It's a uh, two litre, 20 valve, big port. But is it the, is anything interchangeable? Is the head the same? I know the VVT is different. Doesn't mean it's not interchangeable. Um, I genuinely don't know yet. I'm going to have to take the head off and have a look. I know it's got balance shafts in the in the bottom end, really in the sump in these, which I don't want, but you, you know, delete them anyway. It's like some weird mishmash hybrid of a TFSI and a 18T. But how much is, if anything, is TFSI? I don't know because I've never, ever touched a TFSI in my life. I think they're iron block, aren't they? I don't even bloody know, I've never even looked. Um, but yeah, basically I got it really because it was so cheap. If the head was any good, that's all I cared about. I don't plan to use the bottom end, but because being aluminium, I don't really trust it to be that strong. It'd probably be good for a, a relatively low power setup. I don't know. I have no idea, it could be strong as fuck. Some alloy blocks are mega strong. The next day, in a very wet Wales. I just bought a car. Another M R two. It's very tidy, to be fair. It's got a hard top. Very, very tidy. Paint's not perfect. Red cars never are, and it's still a cheap M R two. So, long M O T. Very tidy. Tidiest one I've ever had. And I wanted a red one, and I wanted one with a hard top. So. I just bought another MR2. I just in deepest, darkest Welsh valleys, where in terrible weather, lots of floods. Um, and yeah, bought a car. I do love the Welsh valleys. I think if I could live somewhere, I reckon I'd live in the Welsh valleys. It's not posh by a long shot. It's like a giant council estate on the side of a hill. But it's just, I just like it. It's amazing scenery, crazy roads, not very busy. It's kind of stuck in the past, but also not that far away from anywhere. You can still get to like big places, Cardiff, Bristol, all that in no time at all. And I just like it, I've always liked it, I don't know why. But yeah, I just bought a very, very tidy, um, done like a 50 to 100 miles a year for the last eight years mark 3 mr2 off uh, a retired nice old lady and um i just got underneath it in the wet and it's it's tidy even the subframe is uh i think it must have been like well basically her husband's uh was a agricultural engineer so what's that looking after tractors and shit i suppose so he clearly knows what he's doing because it's, it's been uh well looked after that's for sure like subframes all painted and nice and it's just it's good it's a red car so the paint ain't amazing because red just sucks for uh paint but no it's good we're in somewhere called quimtrach isaf according to that it's the only back weird thing about wales everything's called something weird that you can't say even though most half the people's not even Welsh, they weren't Welsh. Well, they didn't have accents at least. But people just move here because it's nice. It's just like out of the way of it. It's not posh. It's not expensive because it's not posh. It's just, I don't know. I like Wales. South Wales. I'm, well, I like all the Wales. Mid Wales and all the Brecon Beacons and all the um, amazing waterfalls and shit are good. This bit's less pretty. Well, it's still, I like it. I have agreed a price. It's more than I've ever paid for an MRT before, but that's not saying much because I've never paid much for one. 
this in my opinion is very cheap for what it is but it's still more than I've ever paid for it, if that makes sense but considering it's got a hard top and a hard top's worth a grand all day long anyway it's cheap as fuck really I felt it's, it was hard for me to buy it because I don't pay hardly any money for MR2s even though a lot of people gladly pay like you know many thousands I don't so this is more than usual but well more than usual for me but it in my opinion it, it's a very good deal so I you know I cannot complain at all I don't know where I'm driving is this the right way I don't think you can know if it is anymore um yeah I'm gonna pick it up can't get it Monday they said it's a busy Tuesday it's Sunday early evening by the way about what's time time is half past four um yeah I'm gonna get on the train Tuesday morning and come and get it because this is the middle of nowhere there's no the nearest train stations about 20 miles away but um this is like one railway line um yeah all the railways around here are all closed with the coal mines so I'm gonna have to get to the nearest station and then they're gonna pick me up from well not pick me up there meet me there because they've got a, they got a car each so they'll drive down one each and then uh, do the you know job done I've left them a deposit so happy days so yeah new MR2 for the channel not like it matters because nobody watches anyway but this one is what's gonna get the uh, get my VR5 turbo this was gonna be a keeper this one is gonna be a it's gonna be a daily it's gonna have like a full interior but it'll have a bucket seat it'll probably have a welded diff because my opinion is they're fine on dailies um, I'm gonna just it'll get used properly you know I'll probably do drift days in it I'll do all sorts in it um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a keeper for sure. So unless somebody offered me crazy money, I could just build another one for half that price, maybe. But generally, it's a keeper. One hour later. Fuck's sake! I'm gonna go and have a look because I don't know how flooded this is. Well, I don't know where I am, but it, yeah, that's not passable. All of these cars seem to be the cars from the village. They've parked outside the village because it's all in the water. There's a right turn in a minute. I'm gonna go and try that. I hope that'll work because, uh, wow, I don't wanna go all the way back. Proceed to the, to the route. route. I don't wanna go all the way, up, the way back to the fucking A40, which is miles away. I went this way because the sat nav told me to. Bastard. Well, I'm somewhere. The police that was guarding the flooded out section, I stopped a guy and spoke to him and I said, is there any other route? And he basically was saying no, unless you went right back miles to the big main road, a long way back. And uh, he said, because the whole river's flooded, so everywhere's flooded to some extent. Oh shit, what does this say? Ah, oh, not another one, surely. Bollocks. Let's go and have a look, for fuck's sake. I'm slowly beginning to think the copper was right. I think it's the river, looking at my maps, it's the river Monmo. I guess it's what Monmo's named after, is what's flat, like, what's burst its banks. And down here also leads to the river, river Monmo. So I'm thinking, ah, oh, this isn't gonna work, is it? I'm thinking this is gonna be flooded out too. Maybe it is crossable now. I think it's flooded and it's gone down. It's wrecked the road back there. But I think, unless, I think this is fucking passable. I might have fucking made it, you know. It depends if this goes back downhill. If this goes back downhill, I'm fucked. If 
this stays above the waterline, I'm good. All right, I'm back from uh, looking and buying that car. So now I'm gonna, rather than go home like a normal person would, I've come to the workshop to carry on inspecting this two litre 20 valve ALT engine to see what's usable. The head stops there on a normal one. This, rather than a big cam cover, we've got a small plastic cam cover and this is separate. It's like a girdle. It, I'm pretty sure it's a girdle. So instead of cam caps, this covers everything all at once. Why that exists, I don't know. And I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. But it also, I want to make sure, what well, I want to check if things are interchangeable. You know, because I, I presume valves and springs are the same. I presume cams are swappable. I don't know. Thing is, I want to find out if these cams are any better or not. Um, the VVT is a different design. I wouldn't be at all surprised if the old design is swappable. I'm not sure. But um, it's different. And from what I understand, this is the same sort of VVT as um, like TFSIs and whatever. And this is perfectly controllable by Ignitron. So while it's different, it ain't a problem. Well, that's the first thing that looks different. Talk about a fucking uh, valve cover gasket. It's the whole thing. But at the same time, that looks fucking immaculate. Absolutely mint. The front end looks about the same. Uh, tension, I think he looks different. Not sure why. But yeah, fucking hell. Very, very different. There you go. Holy shit, it's absolutely fucking immaculate. It's mint. You see what I mean now about the... I was right about the girdle thing. I thought it was. Literally, the cam caps are part of... You know, they're, they're part of like this girdle that bolts to the rest of the head. Right, so cams are out. And yeah, the heads aren't exactly the same. Looks like cam fitment is identical. I'm comparing it to just a scrap 18 head. But you couldn't use the, the VVT because this side is completely different. So it's thicker. This side is thicker and deeper. This is thinner and shallower. And what that seems to mostly affect is where the water outlet is. The water outlet on there is quite low, almost in line with the exhaust ports. On this one, it's about as high as the top of the exhaust ports. And for cooling, well, for coolant flow, really that's good. You want it as high as possible because it comes through the block and out of there. So this is cooling the, I'll say probably cooling the valves better. It's like a revision, a slightly better design, I must admit. The thing is, I would like to use this head really because it's already large port. I don't have to, I mean, you can, you can large port a small port head. So it doesn't really matter much, you know, but um, oh, fucking hell, it saves me a job to use this. And it's super clean. My only issue with this really is, um, it's a different kind of VVT, I don't really understand. Although supposedly it's the same as like TFSI and whatever, so it's not a problem. And it's probably better. But um, yeah, I think now I need to, Take the head off. Right, I've been taking lots of things apart and I've not filmed any of it, but I can show you now. I'm literally sitting here in a mess at like 11 p.m. watching Tony Allangelo and Finnegan doing a drag week and measuring shit. Right, and this is some uh, NA cams that I've got spare. I think they're ADR ones, I can't remember off the top of my head. Whatever, NA cams are all very similar. Um, I haven't, I've measured lift, because that's the easiest to do. Because you can obviously just measure maximum height and then take it off base circle. I would say 
These ones are exhaust cam on this is about a mil higher than these uh, cams from this one here. Um, inlet cams basically seem pretty much identical. So that's, um, you know, NA cams from these, still the best. Um, duration, I can't measure it accurately. By eye, there's no big difference. But cam timing, the exhaust cam on this is quite a lot different timing to this one. Um, inlet cam is practically the same. Obviously, there's adjustment on the inlet cam. But regardless, starting at the, you know, the initial current, you know, the same base point, timing for this is the same as this one. So, that's interesting. Um, even head bolts are different. Um, let me show you. Similar, but different. The ones out of this engine are a touch longer. If that matters, wouldn't know. But even the where it um, actually stops is slightly different position. Yeah. So I don't think I'd want it to change. But there you go. This is a fit one. Crank pulley. I said, oh, it's like it's part aluminium. And I, and it seemed quite light. I thought, well, maybe it's lighter. I actually measured it. I weighed it compared to the standard 180T one. And it's practically the fucking same. It's aluminium on the outside. I mean, technically, because it's aluminium outer, when rotating, this technically would probably be better. And it looks interchangeable to me. I do bother trying because I don't really care. Because obviously the, the mass, their weight being more in the center of this one versus the standard one. Technically, this would be a bit better, but the difference is fuck all. Literally, the weight is the same. I really thought this was going to be lighter, but no. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's not. Head. Heads. Um, I, this is the one out of this alloy block, two litre. On the face of it, I mean, this is that old scrap. Um, vent valves, piece of shit one that I just use for testing. On the face of it, interchangeable. There is some slight differences though. These have got an extra water hole where these have not. Whether that's a good thing, I don't know. Or is that just something else that's more likely to uh, cause head gasket issues? I'm a bit, yeah, not so sure about that. Um, the rest of the water ports and everything all line up. Slight difference in sizes for a few, but like, what I mean by slight is like, fuck all. But yeah, those two extra holes between each cylinder, slightly, mildly worries me a little bit. Don't know if I'd be as confident as it, um, working with that. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's actually better because it improves water flow. But it just, it's just a bit close to the, um, the cylinders for me. Whip the sump off. Um, it's got all the balance shaft bullshit. And also this shows, um, also it's got a gasket, a sump gasket. Whereas normal 180s don't. But another thing it shows is, look at the fucking, someone has just done the sump gasket and splodged it everywhere. And the fucking pickup is... Full of it. It's not blocked. The pickup's not blocked, so it didn't damage the engine. But it fucking can and will damage the engine because you're a dickhead and you just splurge it everywhere. So it fills up the sump. Funny enough, the sump is clear of it. All the bits that have come off has gone into the pickup. It's like, mate, you're a dickhead. Lucky they didn't damage the engine, but they didn't. But yeah, once I take all this crap off, I see if even the sump switches over. The one difference I already noticed, it's got two extra bolts, big ones, and like 16 mil either side there. At first I was thinking, oh fucking hell, that better not be some kind of crazy um, main cap bolting in shit, but it's not. It just holds in the sump for some reason. 
But yeah, I want to check. Once I get all this crap off, I'm going to get this 18T sump and place it on and see if it's interchangeable. Because the thing is, these were only in Passat, so they were never in any transverse engines. And although I think I'm not 100%, this is the same block as the similarly pretty rare um, 16 valve FSI non-turbo engines, which were alloy block and of a similar era, but 16 valves. So it might be the same block, so you probably could use their sump. I don't know for sure. So, um, but I'll be interested to find out. But that is light. I, I give it that. I, I shame I haven't got a bare block. I'm gonna have to weigh this and then just go on the internet and find somebody who's weighed a bare 180 block. Cause I'll tell you what, it's don't weigh fuck all. I mean, they don't weigh, 180s aren't heavy anyway, but this alloy <laughs> block weighs nothing. It's interesting. So, that is the balance shaft and oil pump bullshit. These are the balance shafts. You can see, look, it's got like counterweights. So There's plastic on one side, metal on the other. And yeah. Yeah, it's got a sump gasket, but it's not really a gasket. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a girdle. It's made of like three mil thick steel. Something like that. It's you know, it's stiff. It's it's like a block girdle, but not. It doesn't tie into the mains or anything. And it's relatively thin, but I presume it's for that reason. I can't think of any other reason why it would exist. It's it's you know, don't get me wrong, it's stiff. But it's also probably not stiff enough that I would have thought it'd make much fucking difference. I don't know. Um either way, it's off. The block is interesting. The oil from the head flows back via separate passages rather than down the side of the block like it normally does. Which is good, I suppose. It's not a big deal, but it's, uh, it's a good thing. But yeah, I took the massive balance shaft bullshit off and I took that bizarre sort of, sort of girdle, sort of knot thing off. I thought, you know what, let's see if a, a 180 oil pump bolts up. And the answer is yes and no. Um, Two of the bolts, perfectly. Uh, let me. Technically, yes, it's bolted up now. The chain's in the right place, all that. Not the third bolt, though. And weirdly, under the third bolt is what seems to be, well, I'll show you what it is. It's that which is an oil line. I don't know if it's a feed, I don't know if it's a return, I haven't got a fucking clue what it is, but it's an oil hole. And because I, because I don't know if it's a feed or a return or whatever, I'm, I'm sure if I give a shit, you could research it and work it out. But it's, um, it's, a, it's a hole. It doesn't even line up with, uh, you couldn't even put a bolt down, it doesn't quite fit. But with the oil pump off, I stuck, um, I stuck this down it, and it goes down to practically there. It goes all the way down through the block, but what exactly is, I don't know. Another interesting thing is though, when it tees sump, it fits fine. All the bolt holes line up perfectly, bang on. So yeah, you could um, front wheel drive eyes these. I was trying to work out the block, because aluminium, it's not quite a 18T block, but obviously TFSI blocks are cast iron. I, I thought I would be the same block, just made a different material. No, um, it's completely different. TFSI blocks are nothing like these, but what it is exactly the same as is a bit what I mentioned earlier in uh, this video, I mentioned it a couple of times, it is exactly the same as the FSI. The early FSIs, which are the 2 litre 16 valve, non-turbo, direct injection things. Um, they got this block, their alloy block, and it is this block. I've looked at pictures and it's got all the, um, the things that match up. Whereas the TFSI block looks very different. TFSI block, like an EA113 version, so you know, Mark V, Golf, you know, GTI and R and all that shit. 
not the triple eight later versions, but the EA one one three earlier versions. Um, they look more like a normal one eighty block. I don't. I've never really seen one, that, you know, side by side. Know if they're identical or not, but they look closer to that. But they look nothing like this. But this is hundred percent the same as the FSI non-turbo block. It's the only aluminium one, and it's the only one with those bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, quite interesting. Just using my custom made crank bolt removal tool. Honestly, this thing's the best fucking tool going. I just made it myself out of an old pulley, old jack handle, and a big threaded bolt I used to brace it. Basically those, those uh, crank bolts are tough, like tough, tough. But this allows either you to use the floor as your rest in place or somebody holds onto it as hard as they can. And 90% of the time it's the only way you're getting it undone. But with that, I can do it on my own. And it's good going, because genuinely, I don't think I've ever got one undone without using something like this. Because those bolts, pretty fucking tight. But yeah, this is cracked off and no problem like this. So shortly, I will get the crank and rods out, I think. So. Right, crank is out, pistons and rods are out. And this is a comparison of, this is out of this two litre alloy block. This is a random 1.8, 20 valve turbo, non-BAM, 19 mil wrist pin jobby. And it's quite interesting. The rods are fucking identical. They are literally the same rod. Same markings, same numbers, same everything. They are the same rod. The reason they're very different though, you see the wrist pins in the same place. It'll have the same size wrist pin. There was talk that these had bigger wrist pins, like 21 mil or something. Are they bollocks? It's the same fucking rod, so they're 19 mil wrist pin. Not 21, I don't know why they'd be 21 anyway, but anyway. But because it's the same rod, but a longer stroke crank to make it two litre, the wrist pin is in a different position on the piston. So, I mean, obviously this isn't dead accurate, but I can line them up roughly for you. They're roughly the same place. But, so this piston sits way lower. So if you put that piston in a, on a standard crank, 20 valve turbo, it would be not very good. <laughs> it would, it'd be very low compression. It'd be in the hole by what? Um, Three mil at least, I reckon. Super low compression, wouldn't be particularly good. But I must admit, the top ring land, which is a indication of how likely it would be to cope with some boost, is exactly the fucking same as these. A non-BAM one of these. And this is what most people don't realize. All these, um, Pistons are fine, like low, even the 19 mil ones go a long way, but I've noticed, and that's why I use them, the 20 mil wrist pin ones, so the BAM ones and whatever, have a thicker top ring land. So we'll cope with even more, but they can cope with like 800 and something. These still proven at 500 plus. And yeah, I reckon honestly, these pistons um, would cope. They got the same thickness ring lang. They're a very similar design. I wouldn't be surprised if these are pretty much as strong. But yeah, honestly, you know, you know what? Um, my thoughts on this is, if you wanted to build a cheap stroker for a one eight T, I'd be inclined to use these fucking pistons you know they look all right it'd be a good cheap stroker interesting i'm keeping them just in case but yeah the rods are dog shit the rods are exact they're like standard so let me have a look at the crank it looks all right to me but i haven't had a good look yet so let's have a look 
This is a block, by the way. Looks, looks like a block, honestly. Nothing much to say about it apart from, seems okay. Nothing magic, but it's there. I reckon you can use it. It looks, it doesn't look particularly weak. I, I'm damn sure it's not as strong because it's aluminium and it's a similar design, but um, it's certainly not terrible. One thing I will say for sure about these though, is the crank is forged. You can tell a forged crank quite easy because they've got these wide ass, sort of, see this, big wide joins on all the counterweights and basically the whole thing. Um, if it's a um, cast crank, it's just usually got one little line where they split the, um, split the mold. But a forged crank has always got a big rough wide join. Not just 180s, it's just a, a forged crank thing. So this is um, a forged stroke crank, which is nice. I don't know if this gives you a better view. But yeah, it's definitely a forged crank. So, what's my conclusion of this bizarre 180T FS high 20 valve hybrid thing? Well, it would have its uses, but is any of the uses for me? Honestly, no. I'm gonna chuck most of it away. Um, yeah, I'm keeping the head purely to, as a test head, N you know, not to, um, not to ever use, literally to test port in and um, just ideas, just another scrap head to fuck with. I'm keeping the bare block for now, for reasons, I don't even know, but I'm binning the rest. I'm, oh, I'm keeping the pistons because, and I'm keeping the crank, of course. The crank, because, you know, I don't feel like I'd ever do a stroker, but if I have, I've got a crank sitting there, so why the fuck not? Um, pistons, if I'm feeling cheap, that's a cheapo stroker for sure. Um, whatever. Still need to bore the block if I use them. Nothing much, but fuck it, you know. I, I got it cheap, so I didn't care. This, is, this, was, a, this was a test. Another news, another thing I picked up is this, which don't look like much, but this is a O2M Quattro VR bell housing, as in what you'd get on a R32 Golf manual or a Golf V6 uh, Full Motion. Basically, a R32 or V6 Full Motion gearbox. So O2M Quattro, pretty expensive because they're not that common. They tend to cost about 400 if you're very lucky, more like 500 normally. And, but thing is, all I need is a bell housing. I can fit it to any other O2M. And I would quite like with my um, VR5 Turbo plan thing to fit it to a normal TT 180T box because, um, or any 180T box, because they're the closest, shortest ratio and that car is not made for high speed like the other car. It's made for being a bit of an animal rally car type thing. So the lowest gearing is probably more me. So chances are I'm going to bolt this to a, you know, 180T O2M box. And good times. But yeah, I got this for like 100 quid because it's not a complete box. A complete box is like 500, this is 100, job done. It's a lot cheaper than buying a whole box. And yeah, that's, that's all you need, because all O2Ms are basically interchangeable. You just gotta swap over the bell in between uh, Quattro and Non, and VR and Four Cylinder. So, there you go.
the next day. Well, out of train station, ready to go and get the MR2. Got to go from here to Wales, and then change train in Wales to get the train to where the car is. Wow, about 15 miles away, but they're meeting me there. Well, I'm in Cardiff now. I've got to change trains to go somewhere else. Train's late. Oh, I think this is my train. They've only changed platforms twice. Fucking hell. One hour later. Well, I'm driving back in my new car. A red MR2 with a hard top. Well, it's got a high idle, so it must have an air leak. Drives fine, but the idle's a bit high. I mean, bearing in mind it's warm. Fuck knows. But more importantly, the handbrake works. These they never fucking work, and um, I'm on a parked on the slope right now, and the handbrake holds it lovely. Miracle. I had enough of the motorway, so I'm just going normal A roads. It's weird these cars; they do the motorway really well but they seem to do it so well. It makes me tired. Honestly, I, I don't know why. They just they just sit on the motorway, but it just makes me sleepy. My bloody Skoda sits on the motorway perfectly good as well, but it doesn't make me tired. But these, I, I just feel like going to sleep. So I'm on a normal road now. And to be honest, obviously I can't do fuck all at the moment because I'm stuck in traffic, but these cars, even completely standard, handle fucking brilliant. So they're really made for like, just going quickly on windy A and B roads. You know, it's like an MX-5 is really. Although I'd say, you know, I don't know. I've had loads of MX-5s and these are probably technically better, but you know, when you're not taking it to fucking 10 temps on the road anyway, I don't think there's much in it. Real direct and good steering and just good handling. Um, to the extent that I don't really believe you need to like add coilovers or any of that shit. I mean, even Thomas says for the road, he won't add coilovers. And to be honest, with the coilovers on my um, current MR2, set softest, I don't think they're any harder than these fucking things are anyway. Um, Anti-roll bars is more important. It keeps it just soft, but it stops it rolling. Although this car, it's, I guess, it's done so um, few miles, been so well looked after. There's, it feels a lot tighter and a lot less rolly than others anyway. So I'm guessing a lot of the roll in these cars are often because shit's worn out. Not even suspension, but maybe like even bushes and things because this thing, there's no knocks or rattles, but it also feels really tighter than usual. Quickly to stop somewhere on the way back, so I'm sure the car. It's pretty tidy. It's not perfect by a long shot, but it's not bad. Um, typical red paint where it's not fucking brilliant. Not sure the rear demister works. The aircon don't seem to work, but it doesn't matter and they never do on these. It's got a slightly high idle for some reason, but driving mint. Four really good tires. And yeah, probably the tidiest one I've had. I'm gonna take the badges off. I'm probably gonna remove the soft top. They've still got the soft top in there. So I'm probably remove that so I can sell it. Cause that alone is probably worth a couple hundred quid. I bet it's mint. And uh, obviously it's gonna save like 15 kilos or something by removing that shit. But yeah, apart from that, I don't like the badges, so I'll probably take them off. Um, apart from that, it's just nice. To be fair, the paint's probably not as good as it looked when it was pouring with rain when I bought it. But for the money, I couldn't care less, to be honest. It could be way worse than this, and I'd have, I'd have took it for the money. But no, it's straight, owned by a retired lady for a long time. Done average of about 75 miles a year between each MOT for the last like seven or so years. So 
so yeah ideal base for the VR5 turbo when it comes to do that for now I'll do a few real minor things but these have like a torsion and diff from the factory so I might even take it to a drift day just completely as it is maybe put a bucket seat in it but uh stop one zz shit box spec basically because i reckon it'd be fine oh another thing about these cars um people always ask me oh i'm you know however tall will i fit well i'm six foot if i stand up straight as i can and um there's loads of room this seat right now i mean i've got like i would say a long body and short legs for that for the height if you know what i'm saying um so my my comfortable seating position isn't even all the way back but even though i've got like you know my height a lot of it is my body and head i think i'm still that far five inches or so from five six inches from the roof i could easily have a helmet on and this is in a standard seat i don't sit very low if you've got a bucket seat you can sit yourself or any aftermarket seat really could sit a hell of a lot lower than this this is in the standard leather interior and i could still easily have a helmet on and not be anywhere near the roof so yeah these cars are absolutely fine for tall people and they're certainly fine for fat people because i'm fat <laughs> so um yeah fuck it they're they're good motors for if you want a little you know go-karty thing it's just they're not very fast but we can fix that because that's what we sell. So, good times. Typical fucking 1ZZ shit. Um, engine management lights come on now. Car still drives the same. Probably related to the high idle, I guess. But yeah, these fucking, these are, these engines are shite, fair play. Um, yeah, it must be related to the high idle because it's idling at like 1500. It's either an air leak or something. I don't think the most common fault with these cars, with these engines, not these cars, is the dog shit lambda sensors. But I don't think it's that. That don't normally make it idle high. So, fuck those. Whatever. Still driving normally. It's just, uh, yeah, typical 1ZZ bullshit. Yet another reason why we change the engine for something actually decent.